well back to the 64 Pontiac Parisian engine and transmission swap project going on because we're putting on parts that weren't meant for the car such as the 700 R4 automatic overdrive we have to get some of these little rinky dink brackets and things to make up to get the throttle cable on so you have to have a throttle cable working on these transmissions that's what controls your hydraulic pressure throttle opens and closes over here that's the controls of pressure in the transmission that we'll see in a second so we have to do an adjustment so I had to with all those little brackets and bits and pieces over here trying to configure things bend a couple of things because this kit was actually made for an Edelbrock carburetor and not for in these old Rochester quadrajets or uh, excuse me uh, four jets as they call them quadrajets didn't come out until another year or so after this car was made so we seem to have things more or less on a proper angle on this end over here is just a trial run how to get our angles proper so we don't want to have any strain on our cable thread our cable through and sit up and over the transmission down in the back thread it through this way squeeze it through bend that bracket up the other way over here now. Well, we'll see in a sec what we get. I think we might be able to get away with that. I even had to file a little hole to be able to get that to fit in. As well, I'm going to have to do a little bit more filing. Like I said, we had to do it like backwards literally to what it was meant to be, but anyway, that snapped in more or less, but just for a trial run here right now. At least we got some decent angles going over. We won't strain the cable too much. Up. I gotta get a tripod for it. I keep meaning to, always forget to, then I get upset when I don't have it. But anyway, we've got that on for now. Yeah, it's pulling. Yeah, we can use lots of adjustment back here, I see. Lots of adjustment, which we'll have to loosen up with our little bracket over there. Actually, I can probably flip this thing around even. And tend it to turn around, it'll probably fit even better. Come to think of it. Come on, you get out. Let go. All right, we'll be back in a sec and we'll get this thing fixed. Amazing how well things work when you simply just reverse one little bracket and piece, but like I said, it's all being jury rigged and bent over here to make it work because you can't even run these transmissions for a half a mile these automatic overdrives without some sort of pressure regulations going to the throttle mechanism all right we'll get a wrench Snug it down here. We can adjust our angles a little bit more, but it's on a nice, it's on a really nice angle. Right out so it won't pull on the side of the cable or anything like that. I'm going underneath the car in a second. We'll just quickly see with the camera what we have as far as adjustments go. All right, put the camera underneath the car, and we'll see how much fall we're going to get. I can definitely see right now that we have to shorten the cable because I can see there's a lot of slack right over there before it starts to pull on the throttle cable. So we want to try to get that. This has to go up in here. And go up in there. There we go. Everything's clearing each other. Push that button over there, and we'll just adjust that cable. That should be not too bad. We got rid of the slack that was there. So now when I pull open the throttle, it's going to hopefully put the throttle cable underneath the 
car. Put the camera underneath there because I got the pan off of the transmission right now so we can verify this all. Alright. I'll be watching this piece over here and see how it reacts on the on the throttle valve right up over. This should push it all the way down in like you saw in one of my other transmission videos that I did. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Hopefully it shows in the camera now. I'll see the results of the movie afterwards as soon as I replay it and see just what my throttle adjustments are like. My assistants went to go get some more bits and pieces that we need so there's no one to see what's going on. But we're coming along. We hope to have this car started today. Can't promise, but we'll see what'll happen. We'll catch you a little bit later. Well, we got her running. Start filming. We're breaking in the can.
watch yourself guys. The fun never ends when you're putting new motors into cars and things. That old square bore carburetor, that old Rochester, turned out to be a total pig. So we've taken it out, the manifold, the whole thing. We're not back to square one, but we're back maybe a quarter of the way sort of but um, we're gonna put on a quadrajet with a quadrajet manifold much easier to work with carburetor parts are a lot more easy to find plus I have a whole bunch of um, needles and I have uh, jets for these things so this one can be tuned we'll just get it onto the um, car it's actually tuned for a 350 in a suburban so um, we'll see where this is gonna lead us now we're getting to be pretty good at swapping these manifolds in a pretty fast time. So there we go. Okay, next step involved. We're plugging the exhaust crossover passages. This car being a summer only car doesn't need those things and plus we don't have the proper stainless steel plate to go on this. So we're using these plugs. We're moving around here. Yep, I'm moving around. I know. Here we go. I'll get it. And so we're using these plugs over here to plug up the passages. That's one little more step needed. Doing it the hard way with the thermostat housing in place. Yeah, exactly. Doing it the hard way. <laughs> yep. That's the way it goes. More hurdles. See how it turns out later. Okay. 
I went down far enough on that one. You have to retap yeah, a little bit there? I need a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, we got to retap this one a little bit deeper. But that's the finished product, what it's supposed to look like. Recessed in there, and that way it can't back out on us and cause a problem. Of course, the Quadrajet, being from a much later vehicle, has got a lot more vacuum outlets on it, so we've, we're have we in the process of properly plugging them up and things. Well, this car only really needs one, but there's like three at least on the front of the carburetor, so we'll be taking care of the two that we don't need. We just need a ported source for the vacuum advance, and that's it. Step by step, backwards, forwards, whatever. Okay, here we go. We'll fall forward, roll on. I'm hoping that that uh, thermostat has not give us an extra handle. Yeah. Here we go, ready to put the intake manifold back onto the car now. Okay, so just gonna watch that. Okay, you got the back? I got the back. Okay. Now let me get it from the port over here. Let's just let's slide underneath that son of a gun over here. And drop her down. And there we go. It's lined up? Yeah. Lined up? There we go. Anyway. Toink. There you go. Toink. There it goes. All right. Let's get my bolts on this side over here. And then we have I just our long get them lined up because yeah. we got to put some sealant on. Yeah. So the Chevys are like so the angle of the um, bolts and things. Okay. Okay. Got that. Next one. Back. Down. Yeah, I got one on this end, so I have one in the front, one in the back, actually two in the front. Done. So we're aligned on this okay, side over here. Started. Yeah, we're okay. Alright. Make sure I don't get any glue on the camera. Lanyards are handy. There we go. Okay, so we gotta seal these bolts? Yes we do. Alright, see you later. Here's where we're at now. The ever so critical setting up of the throttle cable assembly for the 700 R4 automatic overdrive. So I'm adjusting and some fitting. Got to move this bracket up over here a little bit, move it forward because we're almost out of cable length adjustment because our piece is going to be going right over here for our um, to pull on the cable back and forth over here. Sorry, camera's all over the place. We're just a little bit in for time right now. We really got to get this car running today, but then do it prudently enough not to make mistakes. But pretty much the setup's going to be like this over here. Got to drill a hole in this for our throttle rod assembly because this uses a throttle rod rather than a throttle cable on these older cars. And we just have to clean up some of these dirty holes over here. We can see for the distributor, they're all. Oh well, yeah, that's why. Right, this car had an HEI on it before, so we're putting on the stock coil. And you can see these holes are pretty dirty. We have to tap them out. Yeah, they're dirty, Mike. We got to tap them out. They're rusty because it had the HEI on it before. Remember? So there you go. So little obstacles, little hurdles and everything like that, one after the other, but we're gonna beat the son of a gun. Believe me, we are. Well, here's where we are at right now. Here's where we are at. Hmm, does it make sense? Who cares, as long as the car does. Uh, the linkage is on. Got a preliminary adjustment for the transmission. Again, can't stress it enough, never run a 700R4 without the cable hooked up to possibly a maximum pressure setting, then you can work back from there. Better to have a little bit too hard shift to start with, then too soft and slipping shifts. Far linkage is hooked up, i to do a couple of things. I'll have to remember to bring a gasket for this next time, because I don't like to have these things running without gaskets around the air horns over here, but I got plenty of those at home. Oh, there you go, camera was off whack, but I guess I get a gasket for this piece up over here, because these should always have a gasket. Well, that way you don't get dirt getting sucked in from the bottom of the air cleaner. I actually rebuilt this carburetor as um, part of a test that I had to do to pass my carburetor section of uh, auto mechanics years ago. Yes, we had to do carburetors back then. And um, this thing was last run about uh, 21 years ago, but it still seems to be in good shape. The floats still look like okay when I quickly unscrew the top. The gaskets are still supple. And um, I remember this was hooked up to a 350 Oldsmobile or Chevy on a test stand, but 
started right up and it ran so hopefully it's still gonna run nice when we try it out now and we'll see what'll happen again back soon Well, just a brief interlude. Looks like the sky's opened up for a change. It's been pretty much the story of our summer so far this year. Or late spring. <laughs> yep, dodging rain. We're in the midst of setting up some sort of a fuel line system for the car, but. It's always recommended on the fuel line from the fuel pump to the carburetor, you should always use all steel lines. Yeah, I got a couple of tiny kinks in them, but big deal, it's not going to be using nearly that much fuel. And we're using bending tools, but regardless, can't help it sometimes. But anyway, we're going to be putting a fuel filter in, and with that, you always want to make sure every line is flared so that you don't have a chance of a hose pushing itself off. So you do have to have a rubber hose connector for your fuel filter, which we are putting on a fuel filter wherever I dropped it. Yeah, it's around somewhere, but anyway, we're putting a new line filter on for the car as well too. Well, we can't see the forest through the tree sometimes, people, that's what happens. But anyway, we have a tiny little flare there. That'll be enough just to keep the uh, steel line from slipping off of the rubber tube. It's just a little bit of more reassurance when you have these things put together. Oh yeah, we got gas in there now. Go ahead. Well, we put on another car bear. Seems like the quadrajet we got too is messed up. This one I know I rebuilt a while ago. It was already a rebuild, but we opened it up and everything, checked it, and this one is fine. Only took us four times, but we got a good carburetor finally. <laughs> now that sounds healthy. Much better than an old turkey carburetor that was on there which is lying right by the curb. That's a mechanical doofus down there. Oh well, things happen. We're gonna have to run a hot air pipe down to the um, down around the manifold, a piece of piping, and go up to here to get hot air to the choke. We'll fix that. What's that? running the 64 Pontiac shifts fine we have overdrive we have lockup and yeah it's nighttime <laughs> have to close another chapter on the saga of the 64 Pontiac what a wild ride